I'm not sure I've ever talked in circumspection about the right frame. First, it's important to understand that when you ask the question, how did they frame me for right? That the script makes clear that that's what they were doing. So there's no excuse for Pennsylvania law enforcement and the magistrate there to say they had enough evidence to do it because all of the evidence was clearly prior scripted. Oliver Stone worked with the magistrates and administration um, pit with Sir Wet to say they had enough evidence to do it. He said it was um, psychologically consistent with the script. You see, that voided my rights. It meant that they were allowed to strip the rape frame and say it was true, full knowing that, they, that it wasn't true. The sheriff admitted there was no victim, there was no rape complaint. So in order to frame somebody for rape, you have to have a victim, and they didn't even have that. So how did they go about it to the point where they raped Jeannie, raped and then murdered Cersei, chemically castrated me, and made a public appeal to tolerate them in proof that AIDS was an attack because they were defending someone who was still a virgin. From what? From sarcasm, from a script that was showed that was framed for rape for that purpose. And they were calling it the treason of succulent machines. Well, this group came from a Neva Corporation, which is a huge pornographic online narrative that tells the story of how traffickers and corrupt judges work together to deny people like me our rights. And the script itself said, oh, well, you're not university dialectical enough. You don't see the, the good in the woman who knowingly lied about you after seducing you who didn't even claim, never claimed anything other than that I wouldn't walk her home. So how did they pull all this together? One of the ways they did it was, they knew I had to sit on my hands and wait to figure out what was going on. There was a lot of things that needed to be explained and fleshed out. I didn't understand I was deaf. There were a lot of things I weren't hearing. So what they did was they created a cock and bull story at Harvard. They unleashed the maniac on a girl, or at least said they did, and had Miles Kirshner laughing his ass off. And he gets kicked out of school. So they have Jimmy Crary. Now, what they were inducing was the hypnotic program of James Child and Donald Trump, that pacifism is immoral. And this idea was welded to the idea that abortion was like Hiroshima and Hiroshima was like rape. So they stage managed the presentation of, oh my God, this kid got kicked out of Harvard. No, he's been reinstated. Which is it? Wishy-washy. What did happen? What happened? So they could say localize on the queer bay and say he has sympathies for a rapist. Now, I didn't have any sympathies at all for the idea of rape. That's a lie. But they then intoned that the revolution number nine agent who called me and said, I think, I, I think I'm pregnant. And who I offered to raise the child, but said I would prefer not to have to. She said, I'm not going to do any favors. I'm not going to have a baby for you. There's no chance of it, so just forget it. And then hung up on me. That they, they looped it to child and Trump. That's what they were calling preference theory, meaning that they were going to smother this in this the idea that, oh, my God, well, I know he stuck it in once, but I let him. Is there any way that could be construed as rape? Oh, it would mean so much to Mr. McCartney if you would construe that as rape. And they had it all set up. It was a pornographic mind recording of a neurotraumatized gorm. And they sent the agent's women to Carbonell's office and said, let's listen to his tape. 
and they came out and poor anybody I'm so both of them more portion of both of them and I replayed the tape that was untoned when it held me hostage and I'm not going to bring out the magazine the Martin Sheen wants everybody to see because he's licky chops about Michael Reagan's favorite scenes some more <laughs>